Hello and welcome to my YouTube live broadcast. God bless you. God bless your families. Nice to have you with us. Let me know if my sound is loud and clear. Give me a one in the text if my sound is crystal clear. Thank you for the confirmation. Hello, Abdel Haliga, Peter Deval, John Howe, Lula, Sean Guide, my friend, my dear brother friend, Hayden, God bless you. Our dear brother from Paul Talk, Hayden. God bless you, Habibi Kifak, Kifak Walak, Lydia Anello, Andrew Martin, yes man, Erika. Sorry if <laughs> I can't read all the names, but I really love you guys. Thank you for your support. God bless you. God bless your families. Nice to have you here on board with us. Nice to see you. Hope everybody is doing okay. Well, today guys is going part is going to be part 3 of our series of rebuking these disgusting liars and deceivers the Mimi Hijab team that we are exposing. If you didn't watch part one and part two, I really advise you after you watch today's live show to go back and watch all the three parts of this series, right? And for the people who do not know, we created these series because uh, Mimi Hijab and his team of deceivers they made a six hour long video about the apostate prophet and we had to take measures right because they are nothing but deceivers and cowards attacking a person who became an ex-muslim and uh, his name is radwan aka also known as the apostate prophet you know because these people targets people who are nothing but lovely lovely friends of ours right who finally started to think for themselves and they knew this cult this so-called man-made religion is nothing but a scam right it's nothing but a scam so slowly and slowly more and more smart muslims are starting to leave this satanic cult even in the arabic world huge numbers thousands and thousands of muslims are leaving islam even in egypt even in Saudi Arabia, right? The guy uh, from Sira International, Al Fadi, right? Another Saudi ex Muslim. So, you know, Muslims claim that Islam is the fastest and the largest growing religion, which is a scam, which is a false claim, right? You have no clue how many Muslims are leaving Islam in the Arabic world. So what Apostate Prophet is doing, I really appreciate his uh, work and he did not lie at all in his videos. I mean, everyone makes a claim. Sometimes you say something wrong. I mean, we are sinners, right? We all make a mistake, right? We all make a mistake so now and then, and that's okay. But what these people are doing, they are using taqiyya, they are using deception. These people that you see here, Ali Dawa, who is the minion and the nurse of Muhammad Hijab, this Emin guy, this Emin guy, by the way, guys, I challenge him for a debate on Discord, on a Discord platform. He never agreed to debate me. So he's nothing but a coward, right? These people will never ever dare to come up, step up, and debate us. And this Farid, we have been spanking him for the last two days, right? So today we're going to continue this series and we're going to spank them one by one again. Someone asked me to also uh, refute Shabir Ali. Well, you have to wait, my friend, uh, to the end of the show. So if you want me to expose Shabir Ali, you have to wait all the end, okay? So hold your horses, fasten your seal be belt, guys. Let me take you for another ride. So before we start, I want to do and say this. For the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, from the capital city of the United States of America, 
Washington, D.C. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Okay. <laughs> That wasn't me, by the way. That was Michael Buffer. Uh, I, I did this, guys, because, you know, Muhammad Hijab and his uh, minions, they love to watch MMA and boxing and whatnot. So, <laughs> you know, this is round three. <laughs> so, in the red corner, we have the amazing, deceptive team of Mimi Hijab. And in the other corner, we have Rob Christian. <laughs> did you like that, guys? <laughs> Let's get ready to rumble. <laughs> Uh, let it go, let it go. Let us start, guys. So, we are in the last two days, guys, we have showed you that Mimi Hijab, after the debate with David Wood, when he said, Allah prays for, Allah prays for, not to the Prophet. You know, he made a huge claim and he actually spanked his Prophet and his Allah, you know, and he ran immediately to Ghana after that embarrassing debate, as you see here. You know, dressing like a nice African boy, you know. Well, these are, look how they are looking at him. They are dressed <laughs> really normal. <laughs> I mean, these are the real Africans, right? <laughs> look how this guy looks. <laughs> oh, man, you know. Shlomo Hijab, yeah. Anyway, so he, he went to Ghana. You know, he lied there more, he used the Qiyada more, and then, then he went back and he said, he said the following, right? He said the following. No, no, I meant to say after that hot debate, guys, with David, when he came back from Ghana, he said, no, no, I meant to say Allah praises the Prophet. Ya Abdul, ya son of Abdul. If you go to chapter one of the Quran, let me go there. If we go to chapter 1 of the Quran, this is chapter 1, right? Al-Fatiha. Ya Abdul, son of Abdul. It says in Ayah 2, All praise is for Allah. All praise is for Allah. So, Alhamdulillah, right? Alhamdulillah. So, all praise is for the God Lah. Lah. You know, because... Lil means for. So, all praise, the, the praise, which means all praise, is for their moon god, Lah. You see? Those two letters, Lah. That's the real name of the Islamic moon idol. Lah. So, Mimi Hijab, right? Mimi Hijab, instead of fixing the issue, he made it even more worse. He just showed you that Muslims actually commit shirk, right? When they say Allah praises the Prophet, because praising Alhamd, when Allah do is do, the one doing Hamd, that means Allah is worshipping the Prophet. So the actual God of Islam is the Prophet, and Allah is the minion of Muhammad. He is the slave of Muhammad. Did you catch it? Guys, did you catch it? Give me one if you caught it. For the people who did not understood it, let, I can explain it again. Give me one if you understood what I'm trying to teach here. Did you catch it? Abdul Haliga got it. We are blessed. Natalie got it. Okay, so basically everyone understood that Allah is the slave of Muhammad. When Allah is doing hamd, he is praising the Prophet. So Allah is the slave of Muhammad. According to who? According to Mimi Hijab, not my words, it's his word. I didn't say it, he said it. He said, I meant to say, sorry, I made a mistake. I meant to say, Allah praises the Prophet. Welcome everybody who just joined in, God bless you. So, you know, these are the, the kids of today who are defending Islam. They are actually making it even more worse. Guys, let me pick up the phone for a second. Bear with me, just for a second.
Hey guys, sorry, that was a really important phone call. Sorry for that. Can you hear me guys? Is my sound uh, still okay? I had to mute my microphone, but I want to know if the sound is good again. Is my sound good? Okay. That was a really important phone call, so I had to take it, you know. We still have our personal life. <laughs> so, instead of fixing the problem, Muhammad Hijab said, Allah praises the Prophet. Ya Abdul, son of Abdul. Ya Mushrik, son of Mushrik. Pagan, son of Pagan. Ya Muhammad Hijab. Why are you trying to fix the problem, but at the same time you are causing your Prophet more damaging stuff? So instead of doing a nice damage control, he made it more worse for himself and his prophet. You see, these people truly suffer from Abdulism. And I'm not trying to insult the guy, but you know, this is what's happening to you when you are in Islam. You will suffer from this disease, this brain disease called Abdulism. Trying to fix a thing, but at the same time make it even more worse. You know, and a couple of days ago, like we mentioned, this Abdul and his team, right? This Abdul and his team made it even more worse, and they started to attack our friend Apostate Prophet. Maybe you have seen a couple of videos uh, from Christian Prince. Uh, I'm, as you see, we are defending this brother who left Islam, the Apostate Prophet. Amazing guy, you know, he even uh, participated in that uh, funny uh, series of uh, the Boom Boom Room. If you didn't watch that uh, episode, uh, Muhammad sitting with his uh, uh, vest uh, that will blow, you know, sitting with Muhammad and apostate prophet. You know, it was really funny. I watched that. I really was laughing during that episode. He really spanked Muhammad. So... Last time we played a video from Ahmadidad, the so-called Islamic Knight of his time, the hero of Islam 35 years ago. Around 35 years ago, this guy was uh, being the hero of Islam, right? Lying about the Bible. And at that time, there were not many uh, people who could uh, stood up and refute him. You know, there was no internet. People did not know much about Islam and whatnot. You know, I really wish that this guy was still alive, right? Anyway, you know, as a small introduction, I want to play one of his videos again to show you that even the old school hero of Islam is nothing but a deceiver and a liar. Let me play the video and then we are actually going to start uh, the show. But before we start, guys, before we start, it's a really becoming a habit of mine. I want to ask you to pray in the name of our Lord and Savior so he will guide us. Lord, please forgive our daily sins and guide us to forgive others who might curse us or persecute us because we are followers of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ. Please, Lord, give us the courage and wisdom today to overcome lies, taqiyya, and deceptions. Enfold us in your arms, Lord. Fill us with your Holy Spirit that we might reflect your light within this dark world. And that we speak your word bo with boldness or any shame and draw others to your feet, Lord. And that we do this through your beloved and Holy Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, loosen my tongue today to speak the truth to our audience. And please give me the courage today and always to do whatever needs to be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So as we mentioned, guys, on this live broadcast, we will have the opportunity to yet again expose the lies of the Mimi Hijab team in this part three of this series. And in the end, uh, after we done teaching, last but not least, we will have a nice Q&A session as always with our guests in the live chat. And hopefully we will have a nice Ustaz or Imam or Sheikh who is 
maybe have will have the courage and the knowledge to face me on Skype, right? I will open up my Skype so Muslims can call us live in. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian, the Rob Christian without separation. Maybe the admin can give my Skype ID in the chat. I also also put it in. This is my Skype ID. So let us start the teaching guys. Let me first play as an introduction the video of Ahmed Didad. No such thing as holy Quran. You will not, holy in Arabic means muqaddas. Muqaddas. Have you ever came across an ayah in the book of Allah where Allah says al quran al muqaddas Ever came in a narration? No. And as mentioned before, there's no such thing as holy Quran. We don't have anything in Islam called holy Quran. In Christianity, you have holy father, holy son, holy ghost, holy Bible. But in Islam, we don't have holy prophet, holy Quran, and the holy other things. Have you heard it? There is no such thing called Holy Quran. There is no such thing called Holy Prophet. So Mr. Ahmadi Dad, you're a liar and a deceiver. You're a liar and a deceiver. Do a verse from the Holy Quran. Do a verse from the Holy Quran. Do a verse from the Holy Quran. The Holy Prophet Muhammad. The Holy Prophet Muhammad. The Holy Prophet Muhammad. Guys, you saw how Ahmed Dida, the Islamic hero of his time, was lying, fr lying from the back of his, his teeth, saying, calling the Quran holy and the holy prophet, right? There is no such thing called holy Quran. There is no such thing. I mean, you heard the Sheikh. So if the Quran is unholy, if Muhammad is unholy according to the Sheikh, that means Islam is a satanic religion because Satan is unholy, right? And Muhammad is the prophet of Satan because Muhammad is the unholy prophet of Satan. Thank you very much, Sheikh. You are making my job much easier, right? Now, let us go back to the Islamic Mimi Hijab team, who are a nice team of deceivers and Satan worshippers. Let us continue, guys. I dare you, I challenge you to bring me a single religion, put Islam to a side, that glorifies Jesus like we do. Oh. <laughs> Did you hear what he said? Let me scroll back. Guys, I can't stop playing this video you know I, mean, I I really played this video like more than 10 times already but you know this is a really big bust guys pay attention what Ali Dawa the nurse of Muhammad Hijab is saying pay attention he shall glorify me I dare you I challenge you he's challenging a single religion put Islam to a side that glorifies Jesus like we do you Muslims glorify Jesus <laughs> You Muslims glorify Jesus? When did that happen? I challenge you to bring me a single religion. Put Islam to a side. You filthy liar. Glorifies Jesus like we do. Okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I really can't stop watching this. This guy is claiming to glorify Jesus more than us Christians. So, Mr. Ali Dawa, you are claiming to be a Christian now? Are you a Christian now? You are glorifying Jesus? You know, look at these donkeys here around him. Look, donkey number one, here's a guy, here's another guy. They are all listening and they are not slapping him on his neck. I mean, if I was an Abdul, like this guy or this guy, you know, I have done, raised up my hand and slapped him on his neck. What are you saying, Mr. Ali Dawa? You are speaking for all the Abduls. Look, he's speaking for all the Muslims. Look, look at what he's saying. He's saying we. I dare you, I challenge you to bring me a single religion, put Islam to a side, that glorifies Jesus like we do. That glorifies Jesus than we do? <laughs> I mean, this guy has more than 
than 200 subscribers, man. 200,000 subscribers. Why is he having so many followers when, when he's basically claiming to call himself a Christian? I mean, the, we know the Christians, us, we are glorifying Jesus because he's our Lord and Savior. Since when is Jesus being glorified in Islam? You filthy liar. Ya Gazab ibn Gazab. Liar, son of a liar. You Mimi Hijab team, you truly, you people have truly no shame. You have truly no dignity. Right? Look how low they have to go, guys. Use taqiyya, use deception. Right? These people truly have no shame. They have no dignity. You glorify Jesus more than us Christians? <laughs> and you saw him, right, guys? He was speaking for all the Muslims. He said, we glorify Jesus more than you. You liar, you deceiver. Yeah, Mushrik, son of Mushrik. When you, Ali Dawa, when you are claiming that you are glorifying Jesus, that means you are committing shirk according to Islam. So you are out of Islam, Mr. Ali Dawa. Congratulations, you are an ex-Muslim now, like apostate prophet that you are attacking now. Congratulations, Mr. Ali Dawa. I hope your audience just heard the video that we just played and they will I hope that they will not hunt you down with axes right because they are they are allowed to kill you as an apostate of Islam so I hope that you'll be safe after the video that we just played right so guys we can put a big grass on this liar and deceiver right liar and the filthy deceiver claiming that he is glorifying Jesus more than us Christians. Yeah, basically Peter M, yeah, Ali has just left Islam. <laughs> Guys, I, I really I really can't stop playing the video. I, I don't know why, but you know, it really, it really uh, touches me, right? Let me scroll it ben, back again, you know, it's never enough to p watch this guy lying and laughing about his lies. Glorify me. I dare you, I challenge you, challenge you, wow. single religion, challenge Push down to a side that glorifies Jesus like we do. <laughs> <laughs> you filthy mushrik, yeah, mushrik, son of mushrik. Are you dare to call us pagans? You dare to call us mushrikeen as Christians? You truly have no shame, Mr. Ali Dawa. You truly have no dignity. Filthy liar, man. And not only that, guys, not only that, we, you just heard the man, right? You just heard him. He said, we glorify Jesus more than you do as Muslims. So that's a nice shirk. Shirk number one. Shirk number two is in the Quran, chapter 48, ayah 9. Right? wa rasulihi wa 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 According to grammar rules for the people who don't know, do not know about this ayah, this is a very damaging ayah. Chapter 48, ayah 9. According to this ayah and according to Arabic grammar rules, the last person, all the words that come after the last person who is Muhammad, eh? in this case it's Muhammad, the Rasul, all the words that come after him are addressed for him are reserved for him. So, if we read it like this, you have to, according to Arabic grammar rules, as a Muslim, you are commanded to assist Muhammad in battle, you have to honor him, and you have to do tasbih, you have to glorify who? Muhammad, because Muhammad is the last person. So, Ali Dawa, not do you only glorify Jesus, as you said earlier, you also are commanded according to the Quran to glorify Muhammad, the Rasul. Right? So, congratulations, Mr. Ali Dawa. You have committed twice shirk. Shirk you just mentioned, you glorify Jesus and shirk from the Quran. That you are commanded to worship Muhammad. Congratulations. And you have to do this every morning and every evening. So we prove to you, right? We prove to you that Muhammad Hijab is nothing but a mushrik, right? And he's proving to everybody that Allah is the mushrik. Allah is the slave of Muhammad. 
Allah is doing an act of worship, which is praising, praising the Prophet. I mean, how many more shirk do we need to show you from these Islamic heroes? This guy has more than almost 300k subscribers. And this other Abdul, this guy has more than 200,000 subscribers. And these are the Muslim heroes that you follow Muslims. What a shame, what a shame. Mushrik, son of Mushrik. Ya Kizab ibn Kizab. Liar, son of liar. These people truly have no shame. They have no dignity. Let us continue rebuking and refuting these Abduls who are suffering from Abdulism. Let us show you another video and we are going to spank them from another video. Now here you see this Emin, that's the number three guy. This is the Emin that is not accepting my challenge for debate, this guy here. He's, he never accepted my challenge on Discord. And he's part of the team, right? Who made a six hour long video about the apostate prophet trying to lie about the apostate prophet while the apostate prophet did not make any mistake. So let me show you what he said. Emin during this six hour long video is saying, you know, he's uh, basically addressing what apostate prophet was saying. The apostate prophet made a claim about the Islamic discord that this guy is sitting on. There's a huge Islamic discord uh, server, right, that this Emin guy sits in. And they call that server actually a caliphate. You have a caliph and you have his, he, one of his boyfriends is the Andalusian uh, project guy who calls himself Asadullah, right? He's the caliph of that server. Actually, they have an Islamic jihadi caliph server. Can you imagine? In cyberspace. <laughs> In cyberspace, guys. So this guy is saying, this is basically the only thing these imbecile Islamophobic apologists, which is, for example, Rob Christian or the apostate prophet or Christian Prince or, the, or David Wood, such as Ridwan, have to say when they got offended after the stupidity is exposed. Abdul, who is the stupid? Let me prove to you that you are nothing but a stupid. You are nothing but a liar and a deceiver. And you are suffering from Abdulism, Mr. Amin. And you call yourself Amin? Right? Forcing people into paying jizya is essentially forcing a tax law. You filthy liar, you filthy deceiver. Jizya has nothing to do with tax. Something all countries have to do. Now, guys, what this guy, pay attention. This guy, this Amin, is claiming that jizya is nothing but tax. And all countries are basically forcing you to pay jizya. Now, let us see. Let us see what jizya actually is. Right? What is jizya actually? Huh? What is jizya, guys? What is jizya? Is that a text as this guy is claiming? You filthy liar? Now, if we go to the tafsir of chapter 9, 28-29, here the Abduls are uh, claiming that they will go bankrupt, right? Because Muhammad in chapter 9, 28 is forbidding the mushrikeen. They are impure, right? They are, they are calling, you know, impure is not the right word. They are very dirty, so they are not allowed to come near Masjid al-Haram, right? So now the Abduls are started. They started to uh, complain to Muhammad. The Abduls, the Sahaba, the companion of Muhammad, after Muhammad started to forbid the Mushrikeen to enter Mecca, look what they said. So the Sahaba, the companions of Muhammad, started to complain to Muhammad. Oh, Muhammad, our markets will be closed. Our commerce disrupted. And what we, we earned will vanish. So they are complaining to Muhammad. We are going to go bankrupt. Then Muhammad says, don't worry, don't worry, be happy. If you fear poverty, Allah will enrich you out of his bounty. And what's the bounty? That's 
putting, forcing the jizya, punishment, mafia protection money on the Jews and the Christians. Right? So, and feels himself subdued. This ayah means this will be your compensation for the closed markets that you feared would result. Right? Therefore, Allah compensated them from the losses they incurred because they severed ties with adult, adulterers. Right? Because at that time, the Muslim who lived in the time of Muhammad in Mecca, they were doing trades with the Roman Christians, with the pagans, right? Basically with everybody. But the moment Muhammad started to forbid anyone but the Muslims to enter Mecca, that means from that day on, no one is allowed except Muslims to enter Mecca. Until today, till today, non-Muslims are not allowed to enter Mecca, right guys? So by the jizya they earned from the people of the book. Who are the people of the book? Those are the Jews and the Christians, right? And this is reported by Ibn Abbas, Mujahid, and so on and so on. So if we continue reading, guys, if we continue reading, we can show you that jizya is actually not a tax as they claim to be. Because if you are paying tax, let's say the government of USA, when they force you to pay tax, and everyone pays taxes, right? Everyone here pays taxes. Are you doing that to, when you are disgraced? Are you doing that to feel uh, subdued? No. But look what it says. Let me show you. Uh, let's see. So, paying jizya, look what it says. Paying jizya, which this Abdul, right? Which this Abdul, this Amin guy, this guy, meant and claimed that it's only tax, that like every government forces you to pay tax. This Abdul is saying that's a tax. But here, according to the Tafsir of Ibn Kathir, when you pay jizya, it's only for the Jews and the Christians. The pagans are not allowed to pay jizya. They will die. So if you are an atheist and there is Sharia implemented in the country that you live in, you will be killed if you don't convert to Islam. So jizya, paying jizya is a punishment which comes from the root jaza. Jaza, guys, jaza in Arabic, that's the root word. It means punishment. Right? So, jizya comes from jaza, and jizya is a sign of kufr and disgrace. Now, Mr. Amin, you filth, you filthy liar, you filthy deceiver. You filthy liar, you filthy deceiver. When you pay jizya, when you pay tax, I mean, in America, let's say, are you doing that to feel disgraced? You yeah, filthy liar, you gzab ibn gzab. Right? Sign of kufr and disgrace? It's not only that. It's not only that. According to Ibn Kathir, his tafsir, you are disgraced. You are humiliated and belittled. Now, Mr. Liar, Deceiver, Amin, you coward, you don't dare to call me live on my Skype or will never accept my challenge for a debate. You and the likes of, uh, of you. You will never ever call me live because you will get busted, you filthy liar. So you must feel disgraced as a Jew or Christian. You must be humiliated by all the Muslims and you must be belittled. This is a text, you filthy liar? You filthy liar? And not only that, the Muslims are not allowed to honor the people of the Duma. Those are the Jews and the Christians. So we are basically third class citizens. Mr. Liar, Mr. Deceiver, I mean, are you a third class citizen when you pay taxes in, let's say, America or Europe or any country? No. You filthy liar, you filthy deceiver. And if you continue reading, for they, the Jews and the Christians, they are miserable, disgraced, and humiliated. 
Is that what you feel when you pay taxes to the government of America, of the United States? Yeah, and they call us Dimmi exactly, Abdul Haliga. So Dimmi means basically a third class citizen. You are even lower than the dogs that walk on the streets under Sharia law, right? And not only that, if we continue, guys, we can see the real pact of Omar. So let me give you the link, guys. If you in are interested in reading the pact of Omar, right? Omar introduced the pact of Omar. And it says that we are basically like the Jews in the time of the Nazis in World War II. You have to even, not only that, you, not only are you uh, disgraced by the Muslims, not are you only belittled and humiliated by the Muslims, you are not even allowed to fix your churches. You are not allowed to even preach Christianity on the streets, let alone raise your voices. This is the Pact of Amr, guys. If you scroll down on the link that I gave you, you will see the Pact of Amr in the last part of the website that I just gave you, right? You cannot raise your voice when you pray as a Christian. Do you see it? You cannot ring your bells in the church of the churches. You see that? You filthy liar, you filthy deceiver. You have truly no shame, Mr. Amin. You truly have no dignity. Jizya means tax, eh? you filthy liar. Guys, you see, if you noticed, I am, I am really not respecting any Muslim liar. I mean, there, I'm sure there are a lot of really sincere Muslims, right? They are really searching for the truth. They are really respectful. But I don't respect these liars, these so-called Islamic heroes when they lie. I don't respect them. I will spank you if you lie. Even if you're a Christian, guys, to the people who are listening, even if you're a Christian, when you're going to lie for your own personal agenda, I will rebuke you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What about lying in the name of the false moon idol, the Satan of Islam? Right? So I'm not going to go easy on any liar or deceiver. Because Jesus did not go easy on the satanic Pharisees. He called them a bunch of vipers. They are were vipers, according to Jesus. Was Jesus a hippie? Jesus even flipped tables on top of people's heads in the temple of his father. Right? You know, a lot of Christians, unfortunately, here in the West, they think that Jesus was kind of hippie or something. Jesus was, when it was needed, he could be very harsh, like I am right now. Right? Even Stephen, he went inside the temple and he, you know, our first martyr in Christianity. He went inside the temple and he started to rebuke the Pharisees. And he was brought outside the walls of Jerusalem and he was stoned to death. Was Stephen wrong in rebuking those bunch of vipers, those satanic worshippers, the Pharisees at that time? No. Since Stephen, exactly, Phil Herrera. He was the first martyr. He, didn't, he wasn't silent. Why should we stay silent? Why should we respect liars and deceivers? No. We are going to rebuke them in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know? Filthy liars, filthy deceivers. So no, Jizya is nothing but a mafia protection money system forced on Jews and Christians. And it's a big amount of money. Why? Because Muslims will get that as booty from the Jews and the Christians. So the Muslims, they have only one job and that's only fighting, right? That's only fighting. Muslims have no other job to do than conquering all the lands and the Jews and the Christians can work for them right and as you see this is the pact of Omar not only that we showed you that you are not allowed to even fix your churches right 
a Muslim cannot even is not even allowed to greet you, right? If he sees you on the road, he is allowed to force you all the way where the garbage is, right? To the narrowest of the road. So, you know, back in those days, when you're walking on the road, the you know, when you go all the way to the right or left, you know, it's the sewage, basically, right? Right? And in the Pact of Omar, Omar created a lot of, of, of nasty conditions on the Jews and the Christian, right? And who are they? Who are you getting protection from? From the Muslims, right? From the Muslims, by the Muslims, for the Muslims, right? Because if you don't pay jizya, they are allowed to kick you out of your country. I mean, they conquered your country, right? And they are allowed, if you don't pay jizya, take your women as their sex slaves, your daughters, and they will kick you out or even kill you if you don't want to leave. Right? And you have to wear belts around your waist, right? According to the Pact of Omar. Like the Jews who forced, sorry, like the Nazis in World War II who forced the Jews to wear, uh, wear the yellow star of David, right? And the Christians in the time of Omar, they had to wear belts around their waist. You see that? You see that? Belts around your waist to show them that you are the Christian, right? A lot of people, guys, a lot of people are asking me, what does your profile picture mean? What does that mean? Right? Anyone has any clue what my uh, picture means, guys? Why do I use that? I mean, I have it in my intro. I have it everywhere, right? Anyone has an idea why? Here is why. Here is why. Let me show you why. You know, a lot of people have been asking me in the text. You see? You see my logo here? This is my profile picture, right? This is a Christian house, guys. In, for example, in Iraq, the Muslim neighbors, right? The Muslim neighbors started to paint the letter N for, they are calling us Nasara. We are actually not Nasara. We are Messihiyin. But they are calling us Nasara. So they, the moment ISIS came in power, right? The, the neighbors, imagine you, are, you have a Muslim neighbor. You are eating. You are drinking with them for the last 40 years, let's say. And the moment ISIS come, these Muslim neighbors started to betray you because you are Christians. You see? These filthy deceivers. You eat with them. You drink with them. You know, sometimes they say your neighbors can be better than your own family, right? Have you heard of this saying? You know, that neighbors can be even better than families? But your own Muslim neighbors started to paint the letter N on your Christian house to show ISIS, look, go and rob and force jizya on those Christians. This is a Christian house. So this is why I'm using my symbol here that you see here in the, on the, in the right corner and in my intro video, right? Take notes, guys. And we know where the Nazis got the idea of the David Yellow Star. They learned from the Muslims, right? Evil, yeah, it's evil. You know, this is a satanic cult. Islam is a fascist cult, right? They actually taught the Nazis, right? How to deal with the Jews. Muhammad said, bring them with chains around their necks. Those are the best Muslims who do that. Bring them with chains around their necks, according to the hadith. Sahih, sahih hadith, right? Disgusting cult. And you call this a religion, Muslims? Islam is nothing but a death cult, a slave cult, putting Jews and Christians as third-class citizens. And what did Muhammad say? You have to kill all the Jews, else judgment day will not come. So according to Muhammad, even the stones will say, there's a Jew behind me, come and kill him. I showed you the video last time, right? And I showed you the hadith. 
disgusting death cult, slavery cult, fascist cult, racist cult, call it what you have to call it. It is what it is. Muslims have to deal with it. We are immune for taqiyya in 2019, Muslims. You cannot use taqiyya on us anymore. Right? Right? So guys, as we said, if you are interested to know about the Pact of Omar, the Pact of Omar starts basically from here, right? On the link that I gave you. Let me give you the link again. This is Tafsir Ibn Kathir for chapter 928, 929, right? This is the Pact of Omar, the real Pact of Omar. Don't go to any website that is deceiving you because there are many websites, Muslim agenda, who are lying, right? Lying to you about the real Pact of Amma. But this is the real Pact of Amma, right? Because a lot of Muslim websites are deceiving their Muslims, right? Trying to deceive the non-Arabic speaking world or people like us, right? Who are exposing the filth of Islam. This is the real Pact of Amma. Yeah, bookmark it, save it, guys. You have to see what will happen to you the moment Islam or Muslims take control. When they conquer your land, they will implement everything that is here said in the Pact of Omar. They will do it. They have done it. Right? And the proof is in front of you. This is why the Christians in the Middle East, this is why you have to pray for the Christians in the Middle East. And yesterday, our dear friend here, who is always with us, Abdel Haliga, are you with me, my friend? Yesterday, he mentioned, please keep the people, the Assyrian people, in Tel Tamer. It is a small Christian Assyrian town in Syria. They are under heavy jihadi attack at, the, at this moment. Pray for them. Keep them in your prayers, guys. Also, don't forget to keep us in your prayers. Right? Because we are putting our lives on the front lines to teach you about this cult. So please keep supporting us. Subscribe. Smash that like button. And also don't forget to click on the notification bell to receive notifications when we go live. So guys, this is why I am using, right? Why I'm using my profile picture. Because of this cult. Because I am doing this as remembrance for our dear brothers and sisters in Christ in the Middle East. God bless you guys. Thank you for your support. This is why it's so important to download our videos. I mean, if you like a part of my video, download it, cut that part that you like and upload it. Guys, Christians, please don't be lazy. I'm, I'm not asking you to teach like I do. I mean, maybe teaching is not for everybody, right? I, I understand that, I respect that, but at least do something. Show everybody the true face of Islam, the true, hateful, racist, fascist face of Islam. Right? Help me to help you guys. Don't do it for me, do it for yourself. If you can save one Muslim out of this cult, because you know, the Muslims, the majority of Muslims are nothing but victims. Right? They are victims of this satanic cult. Right? Now guys, let us continue and provide you more videos so we can spank these Abduls even more. These deceivers, these liars. Here, in this video, this Mimi Hijab team, uh, sorry, where is it, man? Yeah, this Mimi Hijab team is going to continue lying from the back of their teeth, right? Trying to expose our dear friend, apostate prophet, who became an ex-Muslim. They are attacking him in a six-hour long video. So let us continue, and we are going to spank them again. Let me play the video. Girls, why are you guys still here, by the way? Um doing this because I feel compelled to. I thought that you'd all be bored of me thrashing him every day, but I guess... Look how he's mocking, I busted profit. ...than I thought. Eh, let's get to the video. 
I want to talk about a specific phrase that you'll hear very often from moderate Muslim apologists. Uh, Bismillah. Everyone knows I'm not a moderate, so let's see. Yeah, we know you're a jihadi, Abdul. Yeah, really we know, we know. Going to attach myself to. If you're hearing and reading a lot about Islam, you might have heard the phrase a lot. There is no compulsion in religion. Really? Only moderate Muslims? Uh, we know, we know, we know you are using taqiyya. The phrase comes from the Quran, in chapter 2, verse 256. It goes, there is no compulsion in religion. The right course has become clear from the wrong. Apparently, only moderate Muslims use the Quran. Uh, traditional conservative Muslims like myself apparently only accept, uh, I don't know, um, the Old Testament? Now, I want to stay fair. Yeah, you fuck but filthy I want to liar. Make two points in advance filthy about deceiver. this Quran first. The first point is that this Quran verse was revealed at a much earlier time than later verses like the sword verse that order to fight the non-Muslims wherever you find them. It was also most likely revealed long before verse 29 in chapter 9, where the Quran orders the Muslims to fight all those who don't believe in Islam and to force the jizya on them. This is an important point, because if you are familiar with Islamic theology, you should know that if some Quran verses contradict each other in any way, the verse that was revealed later is more valid. The guys, did you catch what the uh, apostate prophet said? So basically, what happened, guys, are you with me? This is important, guys. Give me one of you with me. Don't pay attention to these Abduls who just joined the chat. They came, you know, to uh, basically uh, take you out from the... Take your focus out from the teaching of today. So basically, guys, what apostate prophet is saying, he's not lying in any shape or form. Apostate prophet is right. You know, according to Islam, if you have an ayah that came before, let's say Muhammad is in Mecca, right? You have the Meccan part of the, uh, of the Quran and you have the Medina part of the Quran. According to, to the Islamic teaching, if the Meccan part, which came so-called before, right, from Allah, when Muhammad was in Mecca with the pagans of Mecca, he was very nice, he tried to be nice with the pagans, right? He, start, he tried to be uh, friends with them, to reconcile with them, right? This is why he bowed down to their idols. We have mentioned this in many of our teaching, when he bowed to Allah al -Uzza wa and he gave them the satanic verses. He was really nice, he was peaceful. But when Muhammad went to Medina, he became very violent. He guarded himself an army of thugs, right? And he became very violent. He turned for, uh, 180 degrees the other way, from being peaceful to being very violent. And that was from the start his personal agenda, right? Because when he was in Mecca, Muhammad had no power. He had no army. But when he went to Medina, he guarded himself an army of thugs. He started to rob the caravans of the me uh, pagan me Meccans, right? And Muhammad became very violent. So in the Meccan part, Muhammad is peaceful. But in the Medinian part of the Quran, Muhammad is contradicting himself, right? From being peaceful, calling Jews, Christians, and Sabians believers. You remember those ayahs? The Jews, the Sabians, and the Christians are believers? Then <laughs> in chapter 9, he is starting to force jizya on us. And he is commanding the Muslim to attack us, right? Qatilu, right? Qatilu, fight those who do not accept Allah and, and his prophet, right? And the religion of the truth, which is Islam. <laughs> so apostate prophet did not lie. And actually, there is no compulsion in religion is abrogated. There is something called abrogation in Islam, right? There is something called abrogation in the Quran. Allah, so-called Allah, we know it's Muhammad, there is nothing called Allah. Muhammad is the alter ego of Allah. Allah is the alter ego of Muhammad, like Clark Kent for Superman, right? <laughs> like Bruce Wayne for Batman. So Muhammad and Allah are the same person, right? Muhammad and Allah are the same. It's Muhammad, right? Fabricating the ayahs of the Quran. So Muhammad contradicting himself, right? Being peaceful, sending down so-called peaceful ayahs in the Meccan period and abrogating himself, changing his mind when he's in Medina, becoming very violent. 
And that's what basically apostate prophet is saying here. So let us continue the video, right? Quran makes that very clear. Actually, there's no contradiction between both verses since they are referring to different scenarios. More importantly, major scholars of Quranic commentaries hold the view that there is no abrogation here. Did you see what he said? He says there is no abrogation here. Oh boy, oh boy, I'm going to spank you right here, right now. Let me play one a little more and I'm going to spank this Abdul, this Farid, who is nothing but another minion, another boyfriend of Mimi Hijab. Right? So let me play a little more and I'm going to spank them one by one again. I'm going to spank this Farid and I will serve him for everybody to see. These include Ibn Abbas, Mujahid, Qatada, and Nahas, Makki ibn Abi Talib, and other scholars that Ridvan has never heard of. The second point is that many scholars, even very important ones like Ibn Kathir, said that a large number of verses, including the no compulsion verse, have either been partially or completely abrogated and practically replaced by the order of fighting them. Okay, here apostate prophet is really being very honest. Ibn Kathir actually in his tafsir says it, but look what this Abdul, this Farid guy is going to say. He's going to lie ab about Ibn Kathir, watch. Uh, actually, pay attention guys, Ibn pay attention. Here right here in front of me and I do not find Ibn Kathir saying such a thing. And did you catch it? Guys, what did he say for the people who are, who are listening? What did Farid just say? This Abdul that you see here, what did he say? He said Ibn Kathir didn't say it, right guys? Give me one if you heard it. Did you hear it? He said Ibn Kathir did not say there's an abrogation. Give me one if you heard it, guys. Okay. Andrew heard it. Christianos heard it. The admin heard it. Rad Prophet, everyone heard it basically. Okay, okay. So according to Farid here, this Muslim Abdul, who's trying to refute apostate prophet, he's saying that Ibn Kathir didn't say it. You filthy liar, you filthy deceiver. Let me show you how this guy is nothing but a liar and a deceiver, right? Let me show you. If we go to the Quran first, this is the ayah that apostate prophet is talking about, right? This is the ayah that he mentioned. Chapter 2 from Surah Al-Baqarah, the chapter of the cow. I think the cow ate this ayah. You know, it's still in the Quran, but you know, it's gone. You cannot use it as a Muslim. According to the Abdul, there is nothing called abrogation in this verse, which is a lie. La ikrah fi deen, right? There is no compulsion in religion. So actually what this ayah is saying, you are, you are in your right if you want to stay a, a Christian or a Jew or a pagan, right? According to this ayah. But here, guys, in here, Muhammad was in Mecca. Did you remember what I taught you earlier? Muhammad, when he was in Mecca, he was really trying to reconcile, right? With the pagans and whatnot, right? He said, there is no compulsion. You can do whatever you want, right? But this ayah is actually abrogated and we are going to spank this Abdul, right? This liar here. This ferried guy who is lying. Let me show you that he's lying. Right? Let me show you that he's lying. Uh, okay. If we go to the tafsir of Ibn Kathir, the English one, right? This is the same chapter. Chapter 2, Ayah 256. I read the entire website, guys. This entire page that you see here in front of you. It's not mentioned that it's abrogated so immediately if you are a guys listen carefully please be with me don't address any muslim in the chat pay attention to what i'm trying to teach you here if you open up this page let me give you the link this is the tafsir of ibn kathir for chapter 2 ayah 256 right this ayah right if you read it in the english there is nothing called abrogation on the in the english but of course, Muslims will lie in their translation, right? How many times did we say to you, don't ever trans uh, trust any translation done by Muslims? How many times did we mention this? Many times, right guys? Right? Don't ever translate, uh, trust 
any translation by, done by Muslims. Why? Because if we go, if we go to the actual Ibn Kathir in the Arabic, this is same chapter. Do you see it? Chapter 2, Surat Al-Baqarah, from another website. Right? This is altafsir.com. If you know Arabic, it's going to be very easy for you. But if you don't Arabic, I'm going to help you here a little bit. This is Al Surah Al-Baqarah, the same chapter, chapter 2, Ayah 256. If we scroll down, this is Ibn Kathir, by the way. Tafsir, the same Tafsir. But this is the English translation. Right? The commentary by Ibn Kathir. Right? If we go to commentaries here, you can click on Ibn Kathir, chapter 2, right? Chapter 256. But as I sh told you, there is no abrogation in the English, right? Abrogation is not mentioned. But the real Arabic, this is the same Ibn Kathir, right? But the original Arabic. Here, if we go down, we can see saying and they remove this part hiya mansukha bi ayat al qatl right it is abrogated the ayah is abrogated by the chapter of the sword which is 9 chapter 9 right which is chapter 9 this chapter basically 9 5 9 29 right 9 5 Kill, slay, kill the pagans. So this chapter, guys, abrogates this ayah. So chapter 9, guys, this entire chapter abrogates at least 120 peaceful Meccan ayahs. Did you catch it? So you have to go to the Arabic to show you that these liars, these scumbags, when they translate Ibn Kathir's translation, uh, sorry, tafsir into English, they are lying to you. The ayah here mansukha. Does anyone speak Arabic here, guys? Does anyone in the chat speaks Arabic? What does it say? Abdul Haliga, what does it say? The, I mean, the proof is in front of you, man. Let me give you the link. If you don't trust me, you can open the link and see that this is the original tafsir of Ibn Kathir in Arabic. Abdul Haliga, what do you see here? What does this say? Can you translate this part for me, please? Abdul Haliga, guys, is a, is a Christian who speaks Arabic like me. What does this ayah say? This highlighted part, what does this say in the English? Hiya mansukha bi ayat al qatl. What does it say? Abdul Haliga, can you translate this part? Can you confirm what this means? Let's see what, what he what he is going to translate it as. Yalla Abdul Haliga Am Bastanak Habim Yalla. Hiya Mansukha bi ayat al qatl. Okay, I think some, something happened or, you know, I don't get any. <clears throat> okay, no response, why? Anyway, you can, you can put this part, guys, I gave you the link. Put this in Google Translate and you'll see that this aya has been abrogated, right? And if you continue reading, it says قُتُلْ حَتَّى يُقْتَلْ So you have to fight the pagans until you kill them. So this ayah has been abrogated. هِيَ مَنْسُوخَ بِآيَةِ الْقَتْلِ Abrogated. And if we go, let's say Rob Christian is lying, guys. Let's say I'm lying, right? I'm doing a false translation like the Abduls do. What about... If we go to another guy who is doing the tafsir, Azbab al-Nazul. I mean, you see it here. Let me give you the link. 
let's say I'm lying. I'm a really bad translator. If we go to another source, which is Asbab al Nuzul by Al Wahidi, same chapter, chapter 2, ayah 256, right? We scroll down, two, 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 all the way down, and I go to page 2. Look what it will say. Pay attention, guys. Are you with me? Are you with me? Read with me. This was before the Messenger of Allah. Allah is praying on him. There's nothing called bless him. Allah is praying on him. Was commanded to fight the people of the book. But then Allah saying, now watch. Watch guys. There is no compulsion religion. Was abrogated. Do you see it? I mean, this is not my tafsir. This is not my translation. Do you see it? So the ayah has been abrogated. And the prophet was commanded to fight the people of the book. In surah repentance. Same as I told you, right guys? So the ayah is abrogated and Muhammad was commanded to fight the Jews and the Christians because the Jews and the Christians are the people of the book. You see? You see how they are lying? I mean, you heard the Muslim, right? You heard this liar, filthy scam scammer saying it's not abrogated. You heard him, right? That's, this is the guy who was talking. Trying to refute. You filthy liar. You filthy deceiver. We showed you not only from Ibn Kathir. That the ayah mansukha. Abrogated. But we also showed you from. Highly respected. As Bab al -Nazul, The reason why. By Al-Wahidi. From two Islamic sources. Not one. Did you catch it guys? You see how the ayah has been abrogated. Do you see? Did you catch it? Not only is. Chapter 2, Ayah 256 abrogated. Not only is this Ayah abrogated, but even the complete chapter of Surat Al-Kafirun, the disbelievers, chapter 109. That funny chapter, guys, that Christian prince loved to mention. Say, oh, disbelievers, I do not worship what you worship. No, are you worshippers of what I worship? Nor will I be worshippers of what you worship? Nor will you be worshippers of what I worship? For you is your religion and for me is my religion. Right? And Christian Prince love to say, I do not eat what you eat, nor are you wish, uh, eating what I eat, nor I am eating of what you eat, nor will you be eating what I eat, but for you is your food and for me is my food. You see this entire chapter, it's still in the Quran, yes, but you cannot use it because it's abrogated by chapter 9, as we said earlier. Chapter 9, Ayah 5 and chapter Ayah 9, Chapter 9, Ayah 29, completely abrogates those very peaceful Meccan period Ayahs. An entire chapter is abrogated, chapter 109, right? Like Ayah chap from chapter 2, Ayah 256. So whenever a Muslim, guys, tries to tell you, you know, Islam is the most peaceful, most tolerant religion, Go to the tafsir, show him, we gave you the links, show him that those so-called peaceful ayahs has been abrogated. Mr. Seek the Truth, I challenge you to call me. Mr. Seek the Truth, I challenge you to call me. Do you have Skype? Let me open up my Skype. Normally, guys, I do this in the... Last session of the teaching, right? But my Skype is open. Mr. S Seek the Truth. I challenge you and your Imam to call me here. Right here, right now. I am accepting your challenge. Right here, right now. Call me. I'm live. Call me, you filthy liar. Call me. Call me, you filthy liar. I challenge you, your dad, your mom and your Imam. Right here, right now. I'm waiting, guys. It's now or never. Let's see what this guy is going to do. Seek the truth. Call me. Call me about this ayah. Call me. You are calling me a liar. I challenge you to call me and refute me about this. Yalla, ya gizab ibn gizab. Yalla. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. You filthy coward.
This is what they do, guys, when we challenge them. You filthy liars. Hey, the legend. Welcome, my friend. We have at least two Abduls. And I have at least one dislike. And no Muslim has the courage and the knowledge to call me. You filthy cowards. Son of cowards. I'll close my Skype again because this guy is nothing but a coward. I'll open up my Skype again when I'm done teaching, okay? I especially opened my Skype for this guy. And this guy is nothing but a coward like his shield. Blah blah in text in the chat is cheap, right guys? Right? When you challenge them for the debate, talk is cheap. I will accept your challenge. But the guy does not call me. You coward son of a coward. Bring me your mom, who is the man of the house next time. Yeah? Since you are a kid. Yeah, Jaban ibn Jaban. Exactly, Abdul I'm I'm Tlahaz, ya akhwi. Abdul Haliga. I'm Tlahaz. Aisha Jama Jabanin. Jaban ibn Jaban. Let me go back, Abdul Haliga. Abdul Haliga, what does it say here? Can you translate Ab Abdul Haliga? Can you, can you translate? This is the tafsir, the original tafsir of Ibn Kathir in the Arabic. Let me give you the link again, bro. Can you translate this highlighted part? Abdul Haliga, you were gone, right? Can you translate for me this part? Does it say? It's abrogated by Ayat Al-Qatil, which is chapter 9, Ayah 5, and chapter 9, Ayah 29. I, basically, the whole chapter 9. Okay. On page 1, my friend, on page 1, in, in the, go to the, underneath, in the last three in the last three sentences, you will see it says, "Waqalu akhirin bil hiya mansukha bi ayat al qatil." Right? It's abrogated, and they said it is abrogated by ayat al qatil. So it's abrogated by the ayah that is from chapter nine. Right? Another name for chapter 9 is the so chapter of the sword, chapter of fighting, right? Which, which is this chapter, chapter at Toba, right? Do you see it? So, Abdul Haliga, did you see it, my friend? It's highlighted, mine, it's on the screen. Mansukha bil ayat al qatil. What does that mean, Abdul Haliga? Yes, that one. What does this mean? Mansukha, what does Mansukha mean? Abrogated, right? Can you give me one, my friend? To confirm what I just said? You know, because if you have more than one Arabic speaker, you can do confirmation, you know? Help me to help you, right? Abrogated, thank you, finally. You see that, guys? Abdul Haliga is saying, Abrogated. Do you see it? Let me copy what he said and post what he said again in the chat. So we have at least two Arabic speaking people who are confirming that the ayah La ikraha fiddin, there shall be no compulsion in religion, is abrogated. Right? I mean, this is not my Ibn Kathir tafsir. This is not my website. This is the king website. Guys, this is the Owned this website, altafsir.com, is owned by the King of Jordan. Do you see it? Royal Ahlul Bayt Institute for Islamic Thought. And this is from Jordan. So the King of Jordan owns this website. And guys, this guy claims, this King of Jordan claims that he's from the family of Muhammad. Right? He's, he claims to be from the family of Muhammad. Yeah, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Shainabi, Shainabi, no problem, my friend. My pleasure to expose this satanic cult, this hateful cult. And we showed you, you know, for some reason, they forgot 
to remove this part, guys. This part refutes this Farid guy, right? This liar he that you was listening to who said there is no abrogation. You filthy liar, yeah, Gazab ibn Gazab. Filthy liars, man. I think they forgot on this website, they forgot to remove this part from the translation. To show you that the ayah is abrogated, right? By the book of repentance. Do you see the word repentance, guys? Let me make it bigger for you. You see this word? Surah repentance. Do you see it? So it's abrogated. The ayah is abrogated by Surah repentance. What is Surah repentance? This is Surah repentance, right? Do you see it? Surah at tawbah So this chapter 9, guys. This chapter 9. Abrogated chapter 2, ayah 256. Boom, on your forehead, Mr. Farid. Ya gazab ibn gazab. Liar, son of a liar. Filthy deceiver. Do you see, guys, why I don't respect these deceivers? You know, some people in the comment section yesterday, I saw one of the comments from a Christian. He said, please, my friend, you know, don't be very harsh. My friend, how can I not be harsh with these liars, man? With this team of me, Muhammad Hijab. Liar number one, liar number two, liar number three, right? And their master, the number one liar on YouTube. These are his minions, right? Uh, the Arabic word for liar is Kazab, right? This is why I'm saying Kazab, Ibn Kazab, son of a liar, liar, son of a liar. So they removed, right? They remove this part, right? Let me make it smaller. They remove this part, guys. This this whole sentence here. These three sentences that you see here in the in down. They removed it here from the English translation. They didn't translate it because they know when people don't know Arabic like I do, right? Like I do. They will not see it. And they will think, ah, this ayah still is still okay. You can still use it. But you can't use it. You can put a big cross on it. Big cross. You can't use it. Yes, it's still in the Quran. Like chapter 109. But you can put a big cross on it. Because chapter 9, Surah the Repentance, the chapter of the sword, abrogated it. Did you catch it, guys? Did you catch it, uh, people? Now you caught it, right? Give me one if you're still with me and you caught it. So we can continue our teaching. Okay. Great. So we can conclude that this Farid guy lied. Trying to refute the apostate prophet. I mean, you heard him, right? You heard him. Lying from the back of his teeth that... The ayah of chapter 2, ayah 256 is not abrogated. You filthy liar, you filthy deceiver. Right? Let me play that sp small part again, guys, where he said it. Uh, let's see. Have either been partially or completely abrogated and practically replaced by the yes, order apostate prophet is right. It's abrogated. Uh, actually, I have Ibn Kathir's tafsir right here in front of me, and I do not find Ibn Kathir saying. So yeah, because that. you are reading the translation, you filthy coward. Why are you not going to the Arabic, you filthy liar? So he's he's reading from here. Yeah, it's not here in the translation as we showed you, right? It's nowhere to be found. It should be here, down here, like here. You see? It's down here. It's not there, unfortunately. Look it up. Look in the translation, you won't find it. Right? You filthy liars when you translate the Quran, the Hadith, the Tafsir. Of course you're going to lie because you have no shame, you have no dignity. Why are you not translating this part? But we showed you from another source why they actually forgot to remove it, right? Abrogated by Surah al Repentance, chapter of the soul. Filthy liars, you filthy deceivers. Let us continue to another video, guys. 
Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. We're doing another episode. I have Emin here with me today. And today, inshallah, we're going to be looking at a video called Do Muslims Worship the Same God as Christians and Jews? What a strange question. Emin, any thoughts? Look how they're going to lie, guys. I really am losing my IQ watching this. This guys. is Amin, by the way. This is Rashid. Uh, and Farid, shall we get into it? The minions of Mimi Hijab. Let's go. Hi everyone and welcome, this is the Apostate Prophet. Therefore, Jews use different words for God, such as Adonai, my Lord, or Hashem, the name, or Elah, or Elaha, God, which the Arabic Allah seems to have come from. The Christian and Jewish God's name is Yahweh, formed from four letters, in Greek known as... So, I mean, I just have to pause a little bit. Uh, here he shows that the word Allah has the word in itself supposedly he's assuming that it has roots from this hebrew word Allah. it's possible however um this kind of proves a simple point that uh, regardless if it's a title or a name regardless of how you want to call it it has the root in the same conception of the same god right same god you filthy liar <laughs> you heard it guys he said same god do Jews and Christians worship the same God as the Muslims? For sure not, you filthy liar. Let's see what he's going to say more. Lord of the heavens and the earth, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Uh, whether you want to call it a name or a title, it doesn't matter. It does matter, you filthy liar. Your God, his name is La. Right? Your God's name is La. If we go to chapter 1, we proved it many times. Christian prince have proved it many times. Your God, His name is La. Alhamd 4, chapter 1, ayah 2. Alhamd, all praise, the praise is for, Li, for, La. Now, is our God's name La, guys? Is our God's name La? For sure not. That's not one of the titles of our God. Our God's name is Elohim. And actually, our God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the living God, not your dead moon idol, our God is not bound to a name. Yes, these are many of his titles. Elohim, Adonai, Hashem. These are nothing but titles for our living God. But our God is so holy. He is so powerful. He is not bound to your, like your Allah, his name is actually La, the La, the La, the La, right? El, the La, right? That's not one of the titles of our holy God, our living God, not your pagan moon idol, who is nothing but a solid statue. You, you worship a statue of the pagan before you, the pagan Quraysh before you, Muhammad simply took La and he adopted it into Islam. Another name for him is Yasin. Seen, right? Seen is another name for the pagan moon idol. La, Seen, Hubal, many names, right? The La, exactly like Phil Herrera said it, guys. The la. So for lil la. For la. So all praise is for for la. This last part. These last two letters. La. Did you catch it? So the real name of the Muslim God, the dead God, is la. Right? And not only that, guys. Not only that. If we go to Surah 5, pay attention guys. Are you with me? Surah 5, Ayah 118, sorry, 18, Surah 5, Ayah 18. And both the Jews and the Christians say, we are children of Allah. Now, we don't say that, but anyway, let it go. And his loved ones say, why then does he punish you for your sin? So according to this Ayah guys, we are actually not the children of God, of Allah, because why would he else punish us for our sins? So here, 
the writer of the Quran, who is no one else than Muhammad, he says, nay, nay, you are but human beings. Did you catch it? So according to Muhammad in the Quran, we are not the children of God. Else why are we getting punished, right? Did you catch it, guys? Did you catch it? So Muslims, so they will not say, Arab Christian, you just invented this. I don't know. If you go to Quran.com, it's the same, right? But the Jews and the Christians say, we are the children of Allah, right? And his beloved say, then why does he punish you for your sins? Rather, you are human beings from those who has cre he created. So Allah here, or basically Muhammad, is contradicting the holy God in the Bible. So, Mr. Amin, you filthy liar. Why are you saying that the Jews and the Christians share the same God? You filthy liar, you filthy deceiver. And if we go to 1 John ver, uh, chapter 3, verse 1, it says the following. Let me play the audio for you. 1 John 3. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Did you catch it? So we are children of God. According to the Holy Bible, God is our Father, and we are His children. So do we have the same God? Certainly not. You filthy liar. Yeah. Gazab ibn Gazab, Mr. Amin, you are a liar, you are a deceiver, like your Allah, who is nothing but a maker. He calls himself the best of all deceivers. Your God is nothing, no one else than Satan, right? Satan is certainly not our father, but God of the Holy Bible, he is our father. And he describes himself to be our father in many verses in the Holy Bible. So why are you lying? Do you have any shame in you? And if we continue in Matthew 3.17, let me play the recording again. Matthew 3. In those days John the Baptist came, preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. John's clothes were made of camel's hair, and he had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptizing, he said to them, You brood of vipers! who warned you to flee from the coming wrath. Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not think you can say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. I tell you that out of these stones God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me comes one who is more powerful than I whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. So guys, again, you heard it. A voice from heaven said, This is my son, who I am love. With him I am well pleased. So again, God from heaven claiming to be the father and having this a son who is Jesus Christ. And he loves him dearly, right? And for God loved the world, he sent his only begotten son, glory to his name. So how dare you to say that the God of the Quran is the same God of the Holy Bible, the living God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You, Mimi Hijab team, you truly have no shame, you have no dignity in you. Shame on you for lying. Shame on you for lying.
right? Shame on you. Guys, let us continue, right? Let us continue. Someone asked me, someone asked me to refute Shabir Ali. You know, that was not my intention for today's teaching. Guys, are you with me? Someone asked me to refute Shabir Ali. Well, that was not my intention, but you know, we are not afraid to refute such scumbags like Shabir Ali, who is running from us. He's running from Christian Prince. He's running from Sam Shimon, from David Wood, right? From any Arabic speaking Christian who is doing what we do. So let me play a very old video that I found. And this is from the time uh, of the show uh, was called uh, Jesus or Muhammad. I really like this video to show you the lies of Shabir Ali, how he is getting spanked. Praise the Lord. Welcome back to Jesus or Muhammad. Hey, Pastor Joseph with David Wood. We're refuting Shabir Ali in his foolish assertion that Muhammad is in the Bible. Without further ado, let's go to our next video clip right now. What is very interesting is that in the New Testament, uh, there, there are indications that there was someone to come after Jesus. Because, for example, Jesus uh, is uh, noted to have said that John the Baptist is the greatest uh, of, of everyone who has been born of a woman. So that means, uh, since Jesus is born of a woman, everybody knows that, right. John the Baptist is greater than Jesus. Mm -hmm. And John the Baptist himself is, says in the Gospels that after me will come one greater than I, uh, whose uh, greatness is such that I'm not worthy to stoop oh. down and untie his sandals. So now, y y if you look at the equation, if John the Baptist is greater than Jesus, and the one to come is greater than John the Baptist, then that one is right. not Jesus, right? Right, right, right. 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 Because True. greater than and equal to is not the same. You thing. filthy liar! So obviously <laughs> there's one to come after John the Baptist who is greater than both John the Baptist and Jesus. According to that confession, we don't want to say, look, our prophet is greater. That's not how we go about our business. Mm -hmm. That's uh, for Allah to select his prophets right. and to uh, say that he prefers one prophet. Filthy liar! You Muslims claim that Muhammad is the greatest prophet. You filthy liar scumbag! We follow the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, specifically because the revelation came specifically through him. But we have indication here, uh, an indication, that someone was to come after John the Baptist greater than both John the Baptist and Jesus. Thank you. You know, that argument stinks. Brother that David. is one of the most horrible <laughs> arguments ever offered by anyone for anything. And this is Amen, really David. Would, amen. Because Shabir is very intelligent. And when I see very intelligent people have to resort to arguments like this. I, I mean, Satan is intelligent, right? Satan is, right? Satan is very intelligent. Media. Why do you have to do this? Maybe he figures his people are so dull that he can put it over them. Yeah, I, 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 don't don't know. Know. I don't know. I don't know if he really believes this stuff or not. If, if so, if so, maybe we can give him a hand real quick. Right? Maybe we could go to Toronto and see him. Yeah, yeah. no, we'll, we'll yeah. give him help right now. I'm sure oh, okay, please do. Please right. do. He's watching, I know. All right, so, um, in Matthew, chapter 11 <coughs> john is in prison and something very i i think is i think is a the whole chapter is uh, is very interesting mm -hmm. um but john had already announced and we'll look at that passage here in a moment john had already announced at the beginning of jesus ministry this is the one this is the one he's greater than me so on right right john had already announced this but john much like other jews of his time had a certain concept of the Messiah. The Messiah is going to come. He's going to conquer everyone. He's going to destroy all Israel's enemies and so on. Right. This, that's what Jesus' followers, his closest companions thought he was yes. going to do. Yes. Because that had been so ingrained into the Jewish mentality. And they're right, right? The, the Messiah is going to do that. They just had their timeline off. And of they're under Roman oppression, yeah. so they're ripe for that kind of Messiah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And so John announces that Jesus is the one. He's the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, John gets thrown in prison. He's suffering in prison. He's yeah. ultimately beheaded. Right. He's sitting in there. Who knows how? And by the way, I'm, uh, prison conditions back then were much worse than they are today. Right? And so John's sitting in here day after day after day. What is Jesus doing? Right? What is Jesus doing? <coughs> Jesus' followers even started wondering, what are you doing? What are right. you doing? You're supposed to be doing all these things. Yeah. And so what we have in Matthew chapter 11 is John actually wonders and he sends someone. Are, are you the one? Are you the one? Because I already announced you to everyone. And I'm wondering, you, am, am I waiting for someone else? Why? Because I'm sitting in prison. You're not doing anything. You're not doing what the Messiah is supposed to do. Right. 
Let's look at um, Jesus' response. Jesus answered and said to them, Go and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, and the lame walk, and the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them, and blessed is he who does not take offense at me. In other words, look at the things I'm doing. I'm obviously Amen, the one David. Amen, brother. I could have not said it better. But don't get upset myself. if I'm not doing things the way you expect me to do them, right? right? Blessed is he who does not take offense. Glory Blessed to his name, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Your expectations because I'm Amen, brother. Mine, right? right, right. And after this, Jesus starts <coughs> talking about John. And let me read at, start reading at verse 11. This is the passage Shabir was thinking of. Verse 11, Jesus says, Truly I say to you, among those born of women, there has not arisen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Shabir says, aha, what do we have here? Jesus says there's no one born of women greater than John the Baptist. So John the Baptist is greater than everyone is born of a virgin, and I mean born of a woman, mm -hmm. and Jesus is born of a woman. Therefore, according to this passage, John is greater than Jesus. <laughs> right? So obviously, John said, since John said in John chapter 1, that someone is coming later who's going to be greater than him. Yeah. Well, Jesus isn't greater because he's born of, born of a woman. And no, and no one born of a woman is greater than John, right? He didn't even finish the verse. Right. So since someone else is coming along, right. then obviously this person is, is greater than John and Jesus. Yeah, Muhammad. And so that's got, that's got to be Muhammad, right? Obvious. Now, now I don't obvious. know why it would be Muhammad, right? I don't know why it would be Muhammad, someone who's, you know, having sex with little girls and stuff. I don't know why they would be greater than John and Jesus. That's but watch one. what happens when we actually finish reading what the verses say. And what the verse says. He stops in mm -hmm. mid-verse. Yeah, yeah. So let's finish that verse, and then we'll go over to John, and look yeah. what jo look at. Jo we'll go after John, chapter one. This is the Apostle John talking about John the Baptist. Two different Johns. And we're yeah. going to read what John the John the Apostle says about what John said. But let's mm -hmm. let's read the actual verse. Truly, I say to you, among those born of women, there has not arisen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than. He. Hey, you and I are greater than John the Baptist. We are. According to Jesus. According, uh, yeah, so. So it could be us. Are, are we prophets? <laughs> it could be us. We, it could be Call us. Call Shabir. Get him on the phone. I love this, man. And let's, well, we, yeah, yeah you, you, can, you can continue reading the passage. But by the way, if Shabir wants to grant this passage, notice what verse 13 says. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why? If you read Jesus' parables, God sends prophet after prophet after prophet after prophet, then the sun comes. Here, Jesus even maintains that. The prophets and the law were until John. Now the kingdom of God has come. Amen. But wait a minute. No, 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 no. The prophets are still coming. According to Islam, the prophets are coming long after that uh, until Muhammad. I see. Right? And the law is, ne and the law is still in effect. Mm -hmm. Right? So think about this. Shabir doesn't even finish reading the verse he's quoting. You see, they never keep he reading. He doesn't read two verses right? later, which totally destroy Islam. He doesn't do any of that. Why not? Now, think about this. Why not for his personal agenda? Verse 11. No one, is, no, no one born of woman is greater than John. Right? <laughs> and therefore, that's Jesus too, because Jesus was born of woman. He doesn't even finish the verse. Why? Because the verse says, pe people in the kingdom of God are greater. The least in the kingdom least of God. in the God kingdom of God. So what you have, you have two things. When it says born of woman, this is, and you can go to, go to anyone, you find this in the Old Testament, the book of Job several times, for instance. Yeah. It's a Hebrew idiom about people of normal birth. Well, how is that contrasted with people You see the how these people God? are nothing well, but liars in this Hebrew sky? Again, Amen. born of the spirit, yes. right? Yes. So you see why we are not respecting these birth, lies? Right? They're not, even though they have been born of a woman, there was a time when they were, they were born physically. Obviously, in the, sec, in the very same verse should be quoted, if he had bothered to quote the rest of the verse, mm -hmm. you see a distinction between people who have this second birth. But obviously this would include Jesus, who also has a supernatural birth, right? Jesus is born of a, born of a woman, but it's not, it's not a normal human birth, right? right? Jesus, more than anyone in history, has... Amen, a amen. Guys, I don't want to... Uh, you know, it's, uh, David is amazing. I love him. He is my dear brother in Christ. I really want to do a live show, if Lord willing, if it's possible... I really want to do a live show, a nice collaboration with him and Sam Shamoon, if the Lord wills. But we will see what the future will give us, right? So, you heard it, right guys? You heard it. 
I mean, if Muhammad was so great as Shabir Ali claims, right? Why did Muhammad, why is he not born from a virgin? Why is only Jesus, even according to the Quran, right? Only he is born from a virgin. Why? We have asked this question. We have asked this question many times to Muslims. Why was Muhammad not born from a virgin? And not only that, according to Islam, guys, Amina, the mother of Muhammad, was a mushrika. Remember the hadith. Guys, remember the hadith where Muhammad is begging his Allah to forgive his mother Amina. Allah said, no, no, I'm not going to forgive her. So according to Islam, the mother of Muhammad is burning in hellfire for eternity because she was a mushrika. She was a pagan, worshipping idols like Allah al Uzza wa Manat. And so is his father, right? Abdullah. So why is the mother of Muhammad burning in hellfire? And why is the mother of Jesus a believer? Busted. Exactly. So, Mr. Shabir Ali, you cannot have a cake and eat it too, you filthy liar and deceiver. This is why we don't respect liars and deceivers, Christians in the audience who are listening. Stop asking me to go easy on these liars and deceivers. Right? Did Jesus respect liars and deceivers? No. He called them vipers. Right? And if we go, guys, if we go to make it even more worse for Shabir Ali, if we go to Matthew 3, you know, a lot of Muslims say, why don't you go to the Bible? Well, we always go back to the Bible. Bible is our truth. Right? We always go back to the Holy Bible. You think we cannot defend our Holy Scripture? I mean, our Holy Scripture doesn't need any defense. It speaks for itself. But we always go back to show you that your shiuch, your imams, your Islamic heroes are nothing but liars and deceivers. So Matthew chapter 3, verses 11 to 15 from the King James Version. Indeed, I baptize you. So here, John the Baptist is speaking. Guys, are you with me? Indeed, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than me. So John the Baptist is saying, not me, John the Baptist is saying, the one who will come after me is mightier than me. And he's talking about Jesus. I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. So John the Baptist is saying about Jesus, I'm not even worthy to tied his shoes, right? Right? He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. You filthy liar calling this Muhammad? You truly have no shame, you have no dignity. Whose fan in his hand and he will th thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then Jesus cometh from Galilee to Jordan unto John. So now Jesus comes, guys, pay attention, to be baptized by John. But John forbid him, saying, I have need to be baptized by thee. I mean, this is John the Baptist, right? This is the John of the Baptist. Why is John the Baptist asking to be baptized by Jesus. Huh? Because Jesus is much mightier. He is the Lord of John. Right? Do you see it? Do you see it? I mean, why would John else ask to be baptized by Jesus? Because Jesus is the one who John is talking about. That after me is the one who will be mightier than me. I'm not even worthy to tie his shoes. So Mr. Shabir Ali, you are a liar and you're a deceiver and David Wood spanked you. I mean, I, you know, I don't even have to do my best here. And the scripture speaks for itself. And if we go to John 1, 
28, 29 from the King James Version. 28, verse 28, these things were done in Bethabara, beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day, John sees Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold the Lamb of God. Did you see what John called Jesus? He is the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. And here John the Baptist is quoting scripture from the Old Testament. So here, a prophecy has been fulfilled by the coming of Jesus. You see how many prophecies Jesus did fulfill? Many! Around 300 plus prophecies have been fulfilled by Jesus. And Jesus is the one who fulfilled the law. The Mosaic law which were around 630 of, 13 of them, right? He fulfilled the Mosaic law. He fulfilled the Old Covenant, right? And now we have a new covenant with God. Accept the ultimate sacrifice. Accept Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, to be reunited again with God. Glory to His name, Jesus Christ. No one is worthy. If you don't accept Jesus in your life, you are not worthy to be saved. Behold the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. John here is quoting scripture. A prophecy has been fulfilled here. Who take, I mean, can Muhammad take the sin of the world? Certainly not. But we know Jesus forgave sin. He said to the woman, Go away, your sins are forgiven, right? Who can forgive sins except Jesus? Who is truly the truth, the way and life? Jesus is our Lord. Islam is false. Muhammad is nothing but a fake prophet. And today we showed you how easy it is to spank the Muhammad hijab team. Right. Easy peasy. Please Muslims, please come back home to Jesus Christ. Your Islamic heroes are nothing but liars and deceivers. And we are spanking them for three days. Right? For three days. Christian Prince did the same, right? Because we felt the need to help our brother apostate prophet. Someday I hope that the apostate prophet, right, that he will become a Christian. But he's doing an amazing job in refuting this satanic cult called Islam, right? They made a six hour long video, lies upon lies, right? And we refuted them one by one, right? I really hope that this Apostate prophet will become a Christian one day, right? I know he's a good friend of David Wood, right? As we mentioned earlier, he participated in one of the episodes of the series called The Boom Boom Room, right? Guys, if you like our teaching and our live shows, please don't forget to subscribe, smash that like button, Click also on the notification bell to receive notifications when we go live. Do we have any Muslim? Let me open up again my Skype. Right? I have opened my Skype before today, but the Abdul who was talking cheap in chat, he didn't dare to call me. Let's see if now, let's see if there is an Abdul who has the courage or the knowledge to call me. Is there any Ustaz? Yeah, who goes boom? That one, yeah. Is there any Ustaz who will not go boom and has the courage and the knowledge to call me? I'm waiting. Do we have any Ustaz? Do we have any Imam? Do you have any Muslim who calls himself a man? I mean, we are live, guys. Call me. Refute me. Help your heroes out. No Muslim?
Where are the imams when you need them? Right? No imam, unfortunately. Where are they, man? You know, guys, it's really a shame. It's really a shame that there are no Muslims who can defend their heroes. It's really a huge shame, right? Guys, <clears throat> I really have to go. It's dinner time. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed today's teaching. Since there are no Muslims who dare to call us. I hope you enjoyed this series. If you didn't watch part 1 and 2, go watch them. We started there. So if you are interested in this series, go watch it. Don't forget to subscribe, like I said earlier. And smash the like button and click on the notification bell. To receive notification keep us in your prayers guys i love you thank you for your support god bless you and your families lord willing we will have another live show again and maybe i will have a live show soon with our friend islam critique maybe you know him he is another amazing christian apologist who is doing an amazing job in refuting Islam and deceivers who call themselves the heroes of Islam. So thank you for watching. Jesus is Lord. Muhammad is a fake prophet. The team of Muhammad Hijab are nothing but lies and deceivers and we proved it many times over now. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Jesus is Lord. Muhammad is nothing but a fake prophet and Islam is a satanic death cult. God bless.